Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar. We will give everybody about 30 seconds more before we officially start. It looks like there's quite a few people still joining. So we will give them a moment and then Judy and I will get started with today's webinar. I'm actually looking forward to this subject too, Judy. I feel like <laughs> we've been talking about it for so long and there's so many unique and quirky museums. I don't think I covered half of the goofy ones. You know, I, I, I tried to do a mix because, you know, some may be a little stepping on people's toes a bit. Yeah, and with the amount of museums, I'm sure that it was not an easy vetting process for you either. Oh, so. It was so much fun. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. All right. Well, on that note, let's uh, get started. So my name's Jenna. I'm with Emerging Destinations. We represent cool companies in cool places. Uh, the other lovely lady you see up there on your screen is Judy Hurst, and she is working alongside Emerging Destinations in the promotion of Iceland Pro Travel and Iceland Pro Cruises. Um, she will be giving today's presentation, as we just mentioned, on educational and wacky museums of Iceland. Uh, before we get started with that, though, I will take a quick minute to introduce our portfolio to you. So if this is the first time tuning into Emerging Destinations webinar, welcome. Thank you, everybody, for being here. Um, as you can see up there on your screen, we have quite the extensive portfolio. But since we're talking about Iceland Pro Travel today, I will just introduce our Europe uh, portfolio to you. So of course, we have Pro Travel, who uh, Judy will be speaking about. They are our DMC or sorry, uh, yeah, DMC partner in Iceland, so they can cover your one-stop shop, whatever it is that you may need. Um, Iceland Pro Cruises, who offers circumnavigations around Iceland, starting and ending in Reykjavik. And then we also have one itinerary that includes Greenland as well. And then last but not least, we have Paxmore Greece, and they are a DMC as well. So if you have any questions about any of the um, companies I just introduced to you, or of course, any of the companies that you see up there on your screen. We do have quite a few in Africa and quite a few in the Americas as well. Um, you can see my email address there. So feel free to reach out if you want private training on any of those, do a bit of a deep dive. If you want some digital material, whatever it may be, I'm here to help. So please reach out if there's anything that I can do for you. Um, and then today's uh, webinar will be recorded. So if you do have to step away at all or cut off early, um, I will be sending the recording out to everybody later this week. Um, all of our Emerging Destinations webinars are also posted on our YouTube channel and our website. So if there is one that you missed or you wanna go back and rewatch, they can be found there. Uh, and then I think the last thing I have to mention is that we will be doing a Q&A at the end of today's webinar so you can ask Judy all of the fantastic questions that might come up throughout her presentation about museums in Iceland. She is um, the queen of Iceland, not literally the queen, um, but her knowledge <laughs> her knowledge is, um, is uh, very incredible. So please utilize that and ask her any questions that you do have. Um, and I think that's it for me. We do have a few Iceland Pro Cruises special offers on right now. I will touch more on those at the end of today's presentation, but just for you to be aware. So I think that's it for me, Judy. I will hand everybody over to you. Okay, thanks so much, Jenna. I was just saying to Jenna how much fun, I, I totally enjoy constructing and putting together these presentations, but this one is really a lot of fun. Um, there's a lot more going on in Iceland than you can believe. It's not just about the Northern Lights and the Blue Lagoon. We're gonna talk today um, on a fun subject. We're gonna talk about some strange and unusual museums. While I'm doing this, it's a good idea if you keep some clients in mind. Um, there's gonna be something for everybody and there's I see multiple opportunities to put together small special interest groups, put a few couples together who have a similar interest. You'll see what I'm talking about. So what I wanna tell you basically is museums in Iceland, they're as varied as the waterfalls. While there are over 10,000 waterfalls in Iceland, there are a mere 266 museums in this small nation. They're approaching one museum for every thousand people. Many of these start in a living room, a shed, or a school basement, which is to say they start on a human scale. Nowhere in the world do private collections become public museums with such ease. 
It's a phenomenon all the more stunning for having happened just in the last 25 years. Reykjavik alone boasts over 60 museums, but today we're not gonna talk about the typical museums that you see here, uh, like the Viking Museum, the Maritime Museum, the Saga Museum. We're going to take a peek into some of the more obscure collections. Okay, this happens every single time. We're, what I want to start at, having said that we're going to go to some bizarre places, what I want to start with first, though, is a museum that I think has to be on every visitor's list. And it's right in Reykjavik. It's basically 10 minutes from the center of town, and it's called the Perlan Wonderful Museum. It is such an encompassing museum for people to go to. And it will show you so much more about Iceland. It's fun, it's interactive. It will tell you about the, the geysers, the volcanoes, the glaciers, the waterfall. It opened only in 1991. And it's strange architecture. Those are a group of hot water tanks that are topped with an enormous glass dome. You can learn all about the puffins with this recreation. Those, of course, are not live puffins, unfortunately. This is an indoor exhibit. However, that's an incredible recreation. And there's all kinds of educational speakers, and we'll learn more about the puffins. This is a fun one. This is great for families. Such a terrific place to go to. You are literally inside of this museum. You can go into an ice cave and see what it's like to be in the glacial cave. You can visit a planetarium and watch the northern lights from the comfort of a seat and being indoors in the warmth. You can watch educational films about whales. Learn more about Iceland's geology, the volcanoes, the tectonic plates, geothermal energy, and earthquakes. There's also a wonderful restaurant and cafe under the glass dome and that rotates so you get an incredible view. There is also an observation deck, an ice cream parlor, and of course the proverbial gift shop. As I said, the museum is only a 10 minute drive from the center of Reykjavik. You can drive there, there's free parking, you can go by bus, you can take a taxi, you can even walk, it's probably a 20 to 30 minute walk. And in the summertime, there's even a zip line. So that's a new, a newly added attraction. Okay, so now that we've done that, now it's time to step over the line a little bit and go and do some interesting, unusual, obscure museums. On the screen here, this is just these are the ones that we're going to touch upon. Um, we're going to I'll go a little bit more into depth about each one, not detailed, but I just want you to get an idea. We do have the um, much allotted um, penis museum, the sorcery museum, the nonsense museum, the napkin museum, the sundry museum. Well, you can see all these for yourself. This is what we're going to be talking about. A few more that we're going to uh, visit briefly today. Well, we're going to start at probably one of the more controversial ones. It is the only penis museum in the world, and it's located right in the heart of Reykjavik, and it has become one of Iceland's main attractions. The museum itself, it opened in 1997, and it contains the world's largest collection of biological phalluses with hundreds of specimens from the entire Icelandic mammal fauna, well over a hundred foreign species. The museum offers vis visitors a unique and unforgettable learning experience. The largest specimen here is from a sperm whale. It's nearly six feet tall, weighs about 150 pounds, and is kept in a giant glass tank bolted to the floor. And mind you, that's only the tip. The entire penis was 16 feet long and weighed 700 pounds. The answer to your question is no. There are no human specimens here. Well, 
the museum is good for a lab and a great photo op. There are some uh, really incredible gifts, as you can imagine, in the gift shop. So we'll leave something a little bit controversial like that, and we'll move on to something that everyone can relate to, the Nonsense Museum. What I've done with all of these, I've put up the entry fee so that you can get an idea. Everyone talks about how expensive Iceland is, and it's, it's so expensive to eat, to drink, to do things and whatever. What you're going to see from this alone is that just going around to the museums, these museums are really, really inexpensive, affordable. In many cases, children are free. Maybe they wouldn't go to the Penis Museum, but we can certainly take them to the Nonsense Museum. The Nonsense Museum is located in the West Fjords, and it showcases a collection of tiny little oddities collected by those with a mania for amassing strange and pointless objects. We're talking about more than a hundred police caps from forces across the world, countless airplane and tractor models, Pez museums, bottle caps, sugar cubes, packets, teaspoons, matchboxes. The museum is undoubtedly small, but it's more than worthy of a visitor for those lucky enough to be traveling in the West Fjords. The town itself has only around 180 inhabitants. The museum is perfectly suited for adults and children alike. It's a fun place, something definitely the kids would enjoy seeing, and of course the adults as well. For those of you into punk music, well, here we go, right in Reykjavik. We have the Icelandic Punk Museum. It's situated, you'll love this, in a renovated public bathroom at the bottom of Reykjavik's major shopping street. In its heyday in the early 80s, Icelandic punk music made a cultural impact that has rarely been felt since. Anti-establishment, deliberate, deliberately raw, full of anarchistic anger and fresh creative energy, the movement would go on to birth some of the country's biggest future stars, including the queen of Icelandic pop, Björk. Some of those traits are still apparent amongst Icelanders today. Stepping into this little compact um, complex, guests will have the chance to read display boards, ripped papers lathered to the cubicle walls, as well as listen to some of the biggest bands of that era. Aside from this, the lucky visitors who will visit will often have a chance to catch intimate guitar concerts. Okay, we're gonna go back to the little bit weird, well, as if the punk museum wasn't weird, but here we go, is the Icelandic Museum of Sorcery and Witchcraft. On the whole, Icelanders have a penchant for believing in unseen forces, witchcraft, wizardry, trolls, ghosts, curses, ruin spells, all have their place in the ancient sagas and have permeated folk tales for centuries. Visitors here can learn in depth about these supernatural beliefs. The museum attracts, oh, maybe about 15,000 visitors each year, teaching them of the regional enchantments and rituals that have made the West Fjords famous as a center for spell craft. The most unusual item here is the only known pair of necro pants in the world. In actuality, it's a frightening, realistic reproduction, hair and all. It is a pair of pants made from the skin of a dead human. Remember that this is saga, this is witchcraft, um, which the Icelandic people believed to be capable of producing an endless amount of money. Admission to the museum uh, includes not only seeing the necropants, but it also includes a 30 minute audio tour through um, installations relating to the sorcerer's craft. You can also find a small restaurant attached to the museum. And then just a few steps away is the sorcerer's cottage, which makes up the second part of the museum. It's really educational and fun, even if you're not a believer. It helps to put you in uh, the mindset of what early Icelandic culture was all about. I found this museum to be fascinating. It sounds so simple. It's the library of water. 
I loved this place. Look, it's only five dollars to to go and see it. Um, it was a project of an American visual artist named Ronnie Horn, and it's located close to Reykjavik on the Snaefell's Nest Peninsula and opened in 2007. Overlooking both the ocean and the town, the Library of Water reflects the relationship with Iceland's culture and nature over the years. It's primarily a, a sculpture place. There are 24 columns that run floor to ceiling, and each one contains water from a different glacier in Iceland. Light reflects and refracts through these columns, creating stunning patterns across the floor embedded with Icelandic and English words. The words and phrases change depending on the weather outside on any given day. Here is a chart that's in the museum. I'm sorry, it's a little bit blurry, but what it does, it's giving you the uh, information about each one of those glass columns and the water and where it came from. And as I say, it seems like such a simple thing. It's fascinating. And oddly enough, the water is different in each one of those columns. It's a, it's a really a great place for you to visit. Okay, back to the crazy stuff. We're going to go to the Sea Monster Museum. The Icelandic Sea Monster Museum. Well, there are stories of monsters who have been around in Iceland for centuries. And now you can get to know them better at this museum. If you like folklore, Iceland has plenty to go around. Tales of sea monsters have played a vivid role in Icelandic folk culture for centuries. Experts have found thousands of written accounts all around the country. Today, these equivocal creatures that many eyewitnesses claim to have seen have a worthy home in the Sea Monster Museum. Again, this is located in the villa in West Westwards, which is not um, on everybody's list when they're traveling around Iceland, but it is up in the western part, a uh, group of islands off the western coast. It's considered an area of the most prolific center of monster activity in Iceland. The Sea Monster Museum brings these remarkable creations to life through a stimulating mix of words and images and videos. The action-packed display culminates in a spectacular interactive experience. You'll hear from many eyewitnesses and academic experts who speak about theories in the nature of sea monsters. At the same time, a variety of relics and artifacts relating to this mysterious branch of zoology appear throughout the museum as evidence for the monster's existence. You'll make up your own mind, you'll see. Another really odd collection museum is the Napkin Museum. It's a pri probably many of us already have this too. It's a private collection in a little teeny tiny uh, five mile square island off the south coast of Iceland. On the love seat, you'll see piles of binders. They're overflowing with napkins. The collection began in 1955. Napkins with dates printed on them go back to at least 1962. A confirmation in 1979, the end of school in 1993, a wedding in 2001. Amongst the napkins are a scalloped edge floral from when the collector was five years old. Another in a duck pattern that matched her sister-in-law's tablecloth years ago. Others from hotels or a pizza hut or the Military Air Transport Service of the United States Air Force. Believe it or not, there are about 14,000 napkins. Aiglo, the collector, collects napkins, and I quote, because when I was growing up, there was nothing to do. No television, no telephone, but there were so many girls with the same idea back then. She says, Six or seven might show up in a snowstorm Easter or Christmas and ask if you had any napkins. They collected them in duplicate so they'd have something to trade with their friends. I wonder how many of us have that collection. The Elves, Ghosts, and Trolls Museum, cafe and gift shop. The Ghost Center is culture, history, and excitement all rolled into one exhibit. The Ghost Museum features all of Iceland's most famous ghosts and their stories. 
Upon entry, ghost, guess, not ghost, sorry. Upon entry, guests are provided with an MP4 player to guide them through the 24 ghost stories. You will be hearing them in English, not Icelandic, thank heavens. The museum encompasses approximately 12,000 square feet dedicated to elves, trolls, and the Northern Lights. Guests will get a glimpse of how the elves and the hidden people live, and they will walk inside a troll's cave. There are different types of ghosts in Icelandic folklore. There are those who did not cross over so as to seek revenge on those who wronged them. Then there are those who were revived by magic, similar to that of a zombie. In many stories, ghosts, ghosts attach themselves to a specific place, haunting all who came into that area. In old times, Ghosts of various forms were often blamed for negative occurrences. If you had bad luck in farming or a stretch of bad weather, well, it was easy to say a ghost was responsible. 54, I'm backing up for once, no, not. 54% of Icelanders believe in elves or ghosts, and they say that it is possible that they exist. They believe that elves are small, only 36 inches high at most, and they have big ears and wear old fashioned clothing. Roads have been diverted around boulders where the elves supposedly reside. Sorry, I, I couldn't back up, but now we're moving forward. We're going to the Sundry Museum. This is a private collection, private museum like no other. For decades, the owner Sveri has collected over a thousand items. He's collected everything between heaven and earth. It is simultaneously, it's a souvenir museum, an agricultural museum, a tool museum, a household utensil museum, a nail museum, a blacksmith museum, a key museum, and more. The presentation is particularly entertaining, and it's clear that Sferi has a certain sense of humor about himself and his obsession with collecting. Now we're going to go to the Astafel Transportation Museum. This is up in the north, the northern part of Iceland, close to Akureyri and Husavik. The Transportation Museum is the oldest car museum in Iceland, and it has one of the largest collections of cars in the country. It features many other types of vehicles and plenty of antique treasures to discover. The museum is a collection of cars and trucks and displays about road and road transport in Iceland. I bet there are a lot of people out there that would love to see these cars. They are fantastic. Here's another very interesting museum. Keep thinking about those clients. Here is the Bobby Fischer Museum. The American Bobby Fischer came to the World Chess Champ, became the World Chess champion when he defeated the Soviet grandmaster and reigning world champion Boris Spassky in Reykjavik in 1972. The match is generally referred to as the match of the century. On display at the Bobby Fischer Center in Selfos are among other things Spassky's and Fischer's score sheets and a replica of the chessboard used during the match. In addition to many curious items related to Bobby Fischer's stay in Iceland. He died in this, he died actually January 17th, 2008, at the age of 64. And his final resting place is at a cemetery only a few meters away from the center. If you've got bird lovers, bird watchers, oh boy, do they have to go to the northern part of Iceland. This is also up in the same area as the Bobby Fischer Museum. This is up in the north at Husavik, and it's the largest bird collection in Iceland. Lake Mývatn in the north of Iceland has the feel of a magical place. It was created by a volcanic eruption 2,300 years ago. The area surrounding the lake is a dramatic landscape dominated by lava pillars, boiling mud pots and sulfur pits. The lake and surrounding wetlands are rich in plant life, and the lake is one of the richest in aquatic birds. Some 115 species are spotted in the area, with 30 duck species alone. Nowhere in the world have so many species of ducks been found in one location. 
So you will see here an incredible collection of about 350 stuffed birds, all different species. And these are almost all the stray birds that come to Iceland, as well as the indigenous Icelandic birds. This is a very unusual place, but I really enjoyed it. It's Petra's Stone and Mineral Collection. The collection began in earnest in 1946 when Petra bought a house and had room for her rocks. She collected most of her rocks by exploring the countryside on foot, often trekking through areas that nobody visited. Today, uh, there are thousands of rocks here. Um, many of which are on display and available for visitors to see in her backyard and, of course, inside her house, much of which is now a museum. The house remains a museum to Petra, the collector, the naturalist, and her collection. Here is another museum of which I am very, very fond. It is the Textile Museum, again in the northern part of Iceland. The Textile Museum exhibits a unique collection of handmade wool and textile items. It also exhibits beautiful Icelandic national costumes and artistic embroideries, along with the tools and equipment used to produce them. It is the only museum of its kind in Iceland. There is a terrific exhibit here. Uh, entitled From Wool to Clothing, and it starts talking about the Icelandic sheep and the wool they produce. It shows how the sheep are sheared. It goes through the laborious process of turning the wool into yarn. The wool from Icelandic sheep is very unique, and it is composed of two layers that have to be separated manually. If Excuse me, if you know knitters, and there are many still out there, knitting is an extremely popular reason that people come to Iceland. We can arrange classes, we can arrange tours, and here you can see the most famous, this is the Icelandic uh, Lopapesa sweater. There's a lot of history and story behind this. Great souvenirs, extremely warm and water resistant, and even great to bring home for your four-legged pets. If this is something that is of interest to you, I can send you an incredible link that will give you the whole history of uh, the industry and the history of the sweater. The last museum that we're going to visit is Skogar Museum and Turf House in the south of Iceland. So here you can see we're only about two hours away outside of Reykjavik. The village of Skogar is teeny tiny and it has a population of about 25 people, but it has an incredible museum. You will find this complex a cultural heritage collection from 15,000 artifacts exhibited in three museums and six historical buildings. The turf house at the Skogar Museum is different from other turf houses in Iceland in that it is a reconstruction of several turf houses from different places in the area. This architecture was a traditional way of building houses in Iceland in the early days of the settlement until the last inhabitants moved out of them in the 20th century. In addition to the beautiful turf house, there's a school building from 1901, a magistrate's house built in 1878 out of driftwood, a farmhouse built in 1919, and a turf stone house from 1870, all of which have been removed and from the places where they actually were and recreated and reconstructed here at the museum. The cow shed dates back to 1880, a storehouse from 1830, um, there's a kitchen, there's a pantry, there is so much here to see and do. There are myriads of interesting artifacts at the museum. National costumes were worn in Iceland by women in the olden days. You'll see beautiful books, Bibles, jewelry, personal belongings of the people from this area. The fishing boat you see here was built in 1855, and it is the jewel in the crown of the Skogar Museum. The Skogar Museum keeps growing. The latest addition is a museum of transportation, and you can follow the development of transport in rugged Iceland through the centuries. 
You can follow the history of how horses and boats were the primary means of transport, see the earliest types of snowmobiles, old cars, finest examples of women's side saddles from the 18th and 19th century. On the grounds is this incredibly beautiful church, the Skogarjerka church. The exterior is new, but the interior is from the original church that was built in 1879. And yes, you can get married here. So if you're looking for a great location for a destination wedding, my goodness, this is a place for you to consider. The village of Skogar has a population of only 25, and you are three minutes from the spectacular Skogafoss waterfall, one of the biggest waterfalls in Iceland, with a drop of almost 200 feet, a width of 83 feet, and you can walk right up to it, but be prepared to get drenched. It is overwhelming, the sound, the sight, the experience. And if you notice, on the right hand, side of your screen you see steps you can actually climb 370 steps to the top of Skogafoss waterfall you'll be rewarded with an awe-inspiring view over Iceland's coast this is all part of the golden circle touring so as you can see Iceland has much to offer in the way of museums Hopefully by watching the webinar, you've thought of some of your clients who might enjoy this aspect of Iceland and indeed had no idea that such places existed. And mind you, we've only scratched the surface. There are many, many more museums, galleries, exhibitions that we can talk about, and hopefully we'll do another webinar on them if you have an interest in it. Um, we've got toy museums, uh, Northern Lights Museum, Aviation Museum, a Herring Era Museum, the French Museum, the National Museum, the Culture House. It just goes on and on. Iceland has so much to offer, no matter what your client's interest may be. I think we've got you covered. Well, maybe not if they're looking for, you know, a warm, sunny beach um, adventure. That wouldn't be Iceland. But I'm telling you, suggest Iceland. Your clients will love it. I certainly do. Jenna, you're up. All right. Thank you so much, Judy. What a fantastic presentation. I mean, there's just, it's, I find it fascinating. I really do. And to be honest with you, I think I've only been to one of those museums that you suggested. So I definitely need to get back and do a museum tour. There's so many things to do in Iceland, but that definitely sounds uh, like an interesting one to combine with with the yeah. nature as well, et cetera. So and affordable and affordable. Yeah, I love that. Um, so now would be the time if anybody's got questions for Judy. I know we've already had a few come through, but if you do have any questions, please feel free to type them through using the GoToWebinar control panel. And we'll try to get to as many of those as possible. We don't want to take up too much time of your day. We're kind of right at that 30 minute yeah. mark now. So Sorry we'll just. That. No, 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 no. It was a fantastic, 30 minutes is great. Um, that's perfect, Judy. Uh, I will mention just before we do get into the questions, um, Iceland Pro Cruises has a couple special offers on right now. So they have a Valentine's Day special. So that includes bookings made for on the Iceland circumnavigation for 2023. Um, all guests will receive a dinner beverage package for the duration of the cruise. So I can include information on what that means uh, in, in the webinar follow-up. That is valid on bookings until February 14th. So not much time left on that one, but if you do have anybody looking to book for this season, it's a great incentive. And also we still have our early bird rates um, available until February 28th. So that's 20% off on regular cabin prices um, on our Icelandic itineraries. So if you have anybody interested in seeing Iceland and like they enjoy cruising as well, it's a perfect combination. Um, okay, so I said that now I see we have some questions coming through. I will make sure to um, to include, oh, somebody asked about the wool knitting museum. So I will definitely include that in the webinar follow up. Um, Judy, this must have been about one of the first places you were you were speaking of. I think 
um, maybe the ice ice museum do they have winter jackets for people to use if they don't bring warm enough clothes for the ice tunnels um in the museum that's at the Perlin museum um it's really not all that cold in there but i'll tell you that the truth of the matter is when you go to iceland remember a warm an unusually warm day in the middle of june july and august in iceland is only going to be 70 degrees so you are going to need a jacket regardless of what time of the year that you go to Iceland. You, you are going to need a jacket because you're going to travel around Iceland. And when you are out and about on the Golden Circle and doing your touring, the wind is a factor no matter what time of the year you're there. So if you have like the puffy coats, you know, they really scrunch down pretty flat. If you can use a space bag that takes all the air out of it and it can go in your suitcase and it's not even an inch thick, I recommend that. But truthfully, you, you should always have a jacket when you go to Iceland. Yeah, that's that's very fair. Um, I have a tough question for you, Judy. I'm gonna put oh. you on the spot. Do you have, what is your favorite museum in Iceland? <laughs> well, let's see. Um, <laughs> That, I'll tell you, I love the Perlin, and that's not one of the weird ones, but I love the first one that I talked about, the Perlin Museum. I just think that gives you so much knowledge about your destination that I think that should be one of the first stops that you go to because you will have a greater appreciation of the destination after visiting the Perlin Museum. Um, personally, I, I'm very much into uh, clothing and textiles and the traditional Icelandic costumes and outfits. So I do love the textile museum. I really find that fascinating. Skogar is fabulous. Skogar was the last place we went to, very close to Skogafoss waterfall. That is another one, but that's basically like on the golden circle. That That is definitely another one that you should go to. It just gives you more of a touchy feel for what Iceland and, and its uh, people, how they lived and what they did. And it's to me, it's a little bit more interesting than just going to the Viking Museum or the Saga Museum. I just like being in the long houses and you're, you're actually in the turf houses. So it's I think it's uh, just a better representation. I was imagining myself there as you were talking about it. I could oh, love it. <laughs> I'm, I'm ready to go back, I think. Um, well, <laughs> let's wrap up there for today, just time wise. I know we had quite a few people asking about um, just sending additional information on the museums and the presentation as well. So we will make sure to include that in the webinar follow up. But do feel free to reach out to Judy or myself if you do have any Iceland questions or if you have, um, you know, want help uh, with an itinerary or a quote for clients, um, Judy can point you in the right direction for that. So please utilize us um, if you do have any Iceland and Greenland, I should say, uh, questions. But let's uh, wrap it up there. We will be back in um, a month or two months, I suppose, for another webinar with Judy. So stay posted for that but thank you so much i know everyone's really busy these days so we really appreciate you taking the time out of your day to join us to learn a little bit more about iceland is it up to me or are we done yeah up to you judy do you have oh, any, I, you know, any i'm looking i'm looking at this slide and i'm looking at my phone number and my phone number is wrong <laughs> and that's my mistake it should be uh three six one eight four eight eight and i just want to tell you that um i don't want to confuse people but i have my own rep company called jdh associates and i have a facebook page and i post daily trivia and all these wonderful little tidbits about iceland so if you have a chance if you're on social media you're on facebook take a look at jdh associates and you'll learn even more about iceland and for anybody who's curious today's temperature in iceland is 35 degrees Fahrenheit and that's a lot warmer than many places in the United States so I really hope that you got something out of this we have tons of other webinars that we've done it is a definite passion with me I hope you can hear that and I look forward to working with all of you and sending you and your clients to Iceland with Iceland Pro Travel and Iceland Pro Cruises Perfect. I will just say one last thing, Judy. I've had so many people comment about how great your Facebook page is. The information that you share about Iceland 
is incredible. So thank you for that. And I would definitely urge everybody to go and follow her as well. Thank so you, everyone. So we'll yeah. See you next time. See you next time. Have a good week. Bye.